All right, for my next trick, we're gonna be tiling these backsplashes here. Now they're gonna go from the countertop right up to the bottom of the cabinet. And they're gonna be using these, I guess they call them a subway tile. These ones aren't white, they're, I don't know, beigey, olive colored, whatever. Always a good idea to lay out your tiles. Now I've put the spacers in, we're gonna be using a 16th inch spacer, and I've put them in so that I can help determine where my end is gonna be. Now these are gonna be laid in a brick pattern, which means there's gonna be a half overlap. So currently, I have just less than half a tile here, which is perfect. And that way when I start with a whole tile on the row above it, I'll uh, end up with just a small piece over here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid any little slivers of tile as they're really, really difficult to cut. Now, what I am going to do to make this look as good as possible is I'll get this, uh, edge strip installed in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to do my tiling that way so that sort of any oddball end cuts where they're not perfectly half they'll still be a good size are going to end up in the corner so I'll have a nice flush edge here things will be hidden in the corner because the other tiles are going to come up against it I'm also going to caulk that seam so I can hide some flaws there I want this end to be pretty same thing over here, I'll have to figure out where my tiles are, I'll start at the edge and move my way in. Been a little while since I've tiled, so hopefully I remember how to do this. So I've installed this end piece here, and I just put a couple dabs of uh, hot glue on it just to hold it in place, and I've kind of smushed them flat just to make sure the tiles will hold properly to it. That'll hold that in place while I get these tiles going. I do believe we're ready to tile. All right, so I've got the one wall done. Doesn't look too bad. I do have a small gap up here, which I think I'll just fill with uh, grout, make it look better rather than that bit of mortar. But uh, not too bad, not too bad. Now I just gotta do this, this short wall, and of course, all around there. So I got lots of tiling to do, but it's coming. Backsplash installed. All we gotta do now is a little bit of grouting, caulk up all the seams, and that particular part of it is finished. All right, so what we gotta do now is just wait for the grout to dry a bit, and you can see it's starting to form a glaze. 
and that'll just wipe off. But you can give it an hour or two to make sure that the, the grout is dry so you're not wiping grout everywhere again. Do not use a wet cloth, you'll just smear that stuff all over. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is start getting this stuff ready and put some caulking on it. So for kitchens and bathrooms, I always use basically a silicone and I always try and use a translucent one because what that'll do is it'll hide any flaws, but it's also see-through enough that it blends in well. Clear, you'll see the flaws. White won't match this particular decor, so translucent. Okay, so on this one light switch here, I had too big of a gap, so I'm just gonna kind of fill this in with some grout. Obviously, let it dry a bit, touch it up, make it look a lot better than that. In the meantime, I've cleaned up the drains here, and I'm gonna put some new drains in, and we're gonna start getting the sink replumbed back in. Now, I do believe I can use the old drain, to my knowledge. I've already drilled the hole through the cabinets, to line up to the old drain there and as long as everything's within about a quarter inch of the old spacing which it should be because the old countertops went in this should all work in theory but let's find out all right so when we're putting in these drains you get a couple things with it you get a drain you get the rubber gasket the friction ring you get the under part and of course there's a nut. Now there's also a little brass tailpipe and fitting to that, which I'll show you in a bit. Now this, this rubber gasket does not go on top. If you do that, what you're gonna have is a bit of a raised drain. So you're always gonna have water around here and that's not what you want. You, you don't want that. This and this friction ring go underneath. This, you want this to sit as low in there as you can of course, you want it to be sealed. Good old silicone. Now gently. Put that in there and center it. Okay. Now underneath you do rubber gasket, followed by friction, followed by this pan. All right, seems pretty snug. Now wipe up any excess silicone. There you go. So once you've got your drain installed, you get this brass tailpiece, sometimes they're plastic. You get a little gasket with it. Gas goes on top. Ring goes on the bottom. Tighten it in place. Now you may have to cut this. 
to fit whatever your drain is. And if you find that you're getting a leak here, you can put a little bit of, there's either plumber's putty, Teflon tape, or there's even like a plumber's grease you can put around there to help seal that. Metal on metal is not usually very well sealing. Uh, same goes for the second drain, so let's do that one. 